Sorority had to do that because we didn't control the system <coughs> back then. But that's that's those days are over. So okay, so this is number one. What's what's the what's the, what else? What else have we done? What are top ten? And that can also include, I should add, men, Department of Mental Health and Department of Health, because a lot of a lot of the primary concerns were also health related and drug treatment related concerns. So we're going back to the community in a month. We're going to be at the town hall. We're all television. We tell them, okay, we've done the project empowerment. We've done the food. We're going to say the food. What else have we done? Substance abuse. That we we put in place a drug treatment program. We're expanding it um, throughout the correctional system. Um, Three, three, seven. We're working with our federal partners, CSOs and the like, to offer drug treatment for the uh, returning parolees as well. So that was just to, for clarity. That's something that did not exist prior to that is the correct. Town Hall meeting. Right. That is correct. Mm -hmm. what, what didn't exist? I mean, I know there was substance abuse. Good. This new 60 slot substance abuse treatment program. 40 males and 20 females. And, and in addition to that, they spent, we won a $10.6 million federal grant for drug treatment. Was that the ONDCP? Was that the Yes. Um, but also, if I can add to that, um, we're really excited about our partnership with DOC because as of October 15th, APRA had actually established a presence at the D.C. Superior Court where we were serving the D.C. misdemeanor, uh, traffic and misdemeanor court, as well as the East of the River Community Court. What this collaboration will enable us to do is to assess people at court once they've been sentenced prior to them being remanded to D.C. jail. On the back end, because they're already captured in our system and have already been APA referred to the residential treatment program at the jail, upon discharge, they will still be in the system and they'll be stepped down into an, a more appropriate level of care for them if they've realized treatment successes within that program. In addition to that, it links directly into the access to recovery grant that we've just gotten from the federal government in that the reentry population is a priority population, which means that upon that discharge, within their discharge planning, we'll be able to make available to that inmate recovery supports that enhance the chances for that treatment to be successful for it to be sustained, and for it to be a long-term recovery. So we're really, really pleased with this. Okay, and so that's that's about four things. Project empowerment, food, 60 slots, uh, the upper presence at the Superior Court. What else is in our top ten? There was, there was uh, issues about staff training, um, which we, we've addressed. Um, we have an academy um, where we for six weeks. We put all our incoming correctional officers through. Um, we established a in-service training, 40 hours, for all of our correctional staff as well. Okay, staff training. What's number six? Um, recreation. Um, we've expanded the recreational hours that are available to the inmates um, at the time of your visit. We um, recreated uh, half of the housing tier was out recreating while the other half um, was restricted to their cells. Um, we've changed that format and all 160 inmates come out of their cells and remain out of their cells except during count time and, uh, and uh, child time. Now when you say come out of their cells does that mean the same thing as recreation? Um, yes, sir. I'm, I'm what is, using I mean, the term synonymously. So what is what do they what do uh, the, the neighbors do when they're outside of their cells? Well, they they can have social visits. Um, people come to visit them. Uh, but that's not really recreation, like it was described to us in June. They, I think they mean real, you know, well, chess, activities. They play no, not the chess. chess. No. Basketball, organized basketball. Um, they have outdoor rec. Okay, but I mean, you know, I mean, I, again, you know, this is, we're not really challenging ourselves here. You know, I mean, I mean, these are, there's, uh, there's got to be some other things that we can do. What, 
Uh, you know, you may want to, uh, like you consulted the uh, the health, uh, the nutritionist, you may want to consult mm -hmm. somebody who's, you know, active in, in recreational opportunities for, for adults. Because always, I mean, you know, a chess game and, you know, a basketball court, that's... That's well, right. This is competitive. That's like yes. a, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, John Hopkins. Right. No, I, you know. I mean, so this, 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 we've got to do more than that. All right. We've got it. we've got a great opportunity here All again right. for you know to create a whole different you know a set of programs. All right. uh, okay. So so I don't know if we get. I don't know if we would if people would uh, give us a passing grade on that one. All right. um, the commissary, we've expanded the commissary options. Um, that was a concern, as I said earlier. What was the that again? Commissary, the canteen, where they go to purchase goods. How do how do the neighbors have money? I thought the money was taken away once they came in. Well, their their families can deposit money, and their accounts they can a, earn money. Is there a limit? A limit? No, sir. Okay. Uh, so. Okay, so what did we do differently? There wasn't a canteen before, and now there is, or we've just We've expanded the offerings of the canteen, mm -hmm. uh, 103 options, and we changed the... How many were there before? Oh, my. Tom, how many oh. offerings? Oh. About 300. Mm -hmm. Their issue was nutritious offerings. Um, and that's what we concentrated on. Um, what else? I think we were about six or seven. What okay. else? Um, we talked about the more programs, and you saw the listing. Where we're pursuing more programs. Um, yeah, but we don't have them yet. Well, we we did put many of them in place since you. Oh yeah, this, oh the six things. Yes, I think sir. I think I have them start. And then there's some slides. Oh, we could also we, um, we could look at uh, this setting this new goal on the work the work programs and the work details uh, uh, additional hours of work details and setting a goal that we could then measure monthly and whether we're achieving and that would then force us to work with the agency heads more closely about identifying actual opportunities, recurring opportunities, say, such as mowing or shoveling or landscaping or you know, other things that would begin to kind of um, take over those activities. Do you have any additional thoughts, <laughs> HIV administrator? Oh, my. Well, I do, actually. Oh, good. Yes. Uh, you look like you had some additional thoughts. Well, it's a little bit of a different take because yeah. I think when we talk about HIV and you look through the town hall, people aren't talking about HIV. Right. But as you and I know, and, you know, Mr. Mayor, you've been coming right. out on a couple of, couple of times recently, we're trying to seek to change right. HIV services just from something that people need to something that they demand and value. And I think DOC's been, uh, with our partnership, DOC's been in the lead of of continuing to move forward the package of services we're giving to inmates and making sure they get as they enter the Correctional Institute and as they exit. Um, DOC has led what's been a national groundbreaking practice of routine uh, opt-out testing for every inmate coming into the jail um, that's garnered amazing responses across the nation um, in terms of a model to follow. Good. But we're now learning from that and we're expanding. So as of January 1st, I believe two different improvements that maybe people haven't asked for, but they should and they should want and they should value mm -hmm. are uh, number one, HIV positive residents on um, treatment that are being discharged will now get discharged with a full 28 day supply of their medicines to tr try to make sure that we're not uh, facilitating interruptions in treatment. Um, and the second, we're expanding the discharge to ensure every jail um, uh, neighbor that comes out comes out with a prevention packet um, that has prevention in, uh, information about the importance of protecting yourself against HIV in Washington, D.C., as in elsewhere, and, and condoms as well. So they might not be asking for it yet, right. but they're going to get something valuable. Well, we'll definitely put that on the list, too. And we, we received an A from Apple. Yeah, that was excellent. That was excellent. Uh, okay, so is that it? Is there anything the Department of Mental Health would like to add to the list? Um, you know, a lot of our activity started pre-June um, 22nd with all the liaisons and the linkages with the community. So um, we we're continuing to fine-tune them and, and to get our numbers up of people connecting and following up on folks. But a lot of the structure was in place prior to the town.